with the idea of gay marriage, seeing it as both a moral and a civil rights issue. But there's still many men out there fighting against the cause. And so to those men who don't support us, say, fine, don't support us. And in response, we will marry your girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> what? You don't think we could? We'd be the best husbands ever. I mean, have you seen us? We're ripped. <laughs> All of us are ripped. It doesn't seem statistically possible, and yet it's true. Because <laughs> we love going to the gym. Do you know who else loves going to the gym? Your girlfriend. Your girlfriend. <laughs> Your girlfriend loves going to the gym. And afterwards, we're going to get pink berries as a reward. That sounds like a great time to us. Not to mention he dressed better than you, while you were spending manwich on your cargo shorts. We are inspecting our Oxford shirts for the craftsmanship of their golden buttons. What do you make up for breakfast? Bags of scrambled eggs? Make her a quiche. <laughs> I'm not that fucking kid. Side of hummus. Made from scratch. Do you even know the difference between hummus and baba ganoush? You're a joke. <laughs> and don't even get us started on dates. <laughs> what? You don't like dancing? We teach a dance class. Uh, tango. <laughs> Sorry, you're not on the list of that art gallery opening? With BBM the owner, Maurice. Or what? Don't you see that new West End play? We're in it. <laughs> oh, and yes, we welcome to the 80s theme costume party. And no, we weren't just checking out that other girl's ass. Obviously. <laughs> we could spend hours just convincing your girlfriend that she's not a crazy one. Because Sandra <laughs> is being a bitch. <laughs> oh, by the way, her dad, he loves us. <laughs> That's because he's not threatened by us. We're playing tennis with him right now. Well played, Mr. Bennett. <laughs> You guys are probably thinking sex. That's where you've got to be. <laughs> we already know how she likes to kiss. She thinks it's funny to make out with us when she's drunk. Oh, you know all those weird perverted fantasies that she thinks you should immediately know? <laughs> yeah, she's told us right. We could play her like an upright bait. Oh yeah, and the kind of feasums that she wants. We're okay with that. <laughs> if all this isn't enough, we're the shoulder your girlfriend cries on, which is complaining about you. Oh, we usually know all your weaknesses. You are the Death Star. We are an army of fabulous new Skywalkers. So we're doing you a huge favour by being more attracted to each other than to your girlfriends. So, so you stay close-minded about this. We will take one for the team, and we will marry the crowd. So don't make us marry your girlfriend, and just support gay marriage. Are you only having a salad for lunch today? Yeah, I don't eat that much meat. That was your chance! Hey, you know, I've got this thing on my back. Do you want a bit of Shh. I'm spying on Paul and Gillian. I think they're about to take the next step in their relationship. What? Isn't Paul gay? I thought you guys used to go out. Oh, he is. They're just friends, but you know. No. <laughs> in every gay straight relationship, there comes a point where the straight person tries to push the boundaries and says something jokingly homophobic. So, how was your trip to New York? I went to Queens. Oh, did you go to that beer garden? No, you're supposed to go, oh, I thought you usually go down on Queens. Ha 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 ha! What are you talking about? Someone might use the term faggotron. Or call someone a cum drenched mistake of God. <laughs> someone once told me they hated all gay people because I was late for dinner. That's horrible, there's no way gay people like that. No, oh, we don't. But if the friendship is strong enough, we'll laugh it off. And that's the moment someone goes from being a homophobe to a true friend with homophobic tendencies. <laughs> Sorry, that's my friend Dick. He can get really anal. Don't worry about it. It's absolutely fine. I've got a friend just like that. It's fine. Oh, come on! Yeah, I don't think all straight people do this. Sure they do. And it doesn't stop there. Men do it to women. White people do it to black people. White people do it to Asian people. White people do it to... <laughs> <laughs> Men do it to women? Is that why you called me a slut that time you saw me taking my birth control? Exactly! Oh, I thought you were just being an arsehole. I was! <laughs> but I was being an arsehole in a way that proves that our friendship is stronger than years of discrimination. I don't understand your pain, but I'm going to act like I do because I love you. So... Aww. <laughs> now come on, it's just going to happen any minute. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Actually, most people eat from the side, but I think it tastes bad as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's great. You're always showing me new perspective on stuff. Oh, for crying out loud, just do it already. Go on, get in your face, just do it. Ask him, oh, can I see your grinder profile? Oh, what smells like poppers? Oh, who's on Strictly tonight? Oh my god, you're missing Strictly, are you okay? Just ask him, ask him if he's heartbroken about being out today. See how hard he's coming over the will and grace reunion, yes! <laughs> Find out his favourite form of foreskin, just do it! <laughs> So behind on all the TV I have to watch. You're always behind. You're always trying to catch up. What about real life? This is my life. <laughs> There's more to life than the drudgery of trying to catch up on popular television. I mean, what about me? Oh, for God's sake, can you just leave me alone? I'm trying to watch Iron Fist here. You don't even know if you like it. You take that back! <laughs> Where will it be enough? You're still catching up on The Walking Dead. I mean, that isn't even essential viewing. Uh, come on. Do you want people to think you're married to a fool? Because that is exactly what they think. If I'm going to be up with them tomorrow, and I don't have an opinion on Jeffrey Dean Morgan's performance, is Negan. When will it be enough, though? When will it stop? Do you, do you have to watch every comic book series, every docu-series, every adaptation of a podcast? Podcast charts! Well, was it moderately well reviewed? Yes. Then yes. <laughs> Even the C's originals? I mean, listen to what you're saying. What am I supposed to do? I mean, what if I go into the office tomorrow and somebody asks me about Tim Meadows' performance in Son of Zorn? I don't know. I don't watch Son of Zorn. Well, he should. He's actually pretty good. I don't have the time! Nobody has the time! Or oh, what? Oh, you think I do some fun? <coughs> There's a new world out there, honey. And it requires me to get high, sit on this chair, and watch endless hours of nature photography. <laughs> it's a nightmare! <laughs> think about how this affects me. Affects? FX. Shit, I need to watch all the FX shows and all the FXX shows. <laughs> Please, stop watching TV. Take a break. It, it's not healthy. Do something relaxing, like watch a film. Oh, are you still talking to me? I want my husband back. I want you with me, not you up watching some under-the-radar comedy about a young urban couple navigating their way through life and love. Catastrophe? No, the other one. <laughs> Casual? No, the other one. Love? No, the other one. <laughs> You're the worst? Maybe. I don't know. I get them confused. I get them so confused. <laughs> <laughs> Darling. <laughs> you're right. No, you're right. Maybe I don't have to watch television all the time. Do you mean it? Yes. I mean, who cares if I haven't seen The Sopranos? Well, you have to watch The Sopranos. <laughs> Ushering in the modern golden age of television. Yes. Look, I know things have been hard, but I'm not ready to give up. Not yet. I'm trying so hard to be a good wife. Fuck, and it was a good wife as well. <laughs>
I'm off work tomorrow. Besides, I want to see your face again. <laughs> yeah, I just woke up. No, I'm dead. Actually, I already have plans tonight. Sorry, I'll text you later. Have fun at work. Oh, don't worry about texting me later. Talk to you some other time. Though you said all you had going on today was paperwork when I asked you yesterday. Yeah, I did that today. My friends asked me to play cards this morning. So between 2 a.m. when I left and 11 a.m. when I asked to hang out, you made plans. This is since you woke up at 12. Are you kidding me? He texted me at 10 a.m. For now, a guy always wants to get laid and wants nothing more to do with me. What a mistake. Take care, Kim. I'm sorry to have bothered you. Please delete my number. <laughs>
chance. I'm off on Friday and Saturday, just wondering if you'll let me take you ice skating. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> I just want you to know I think you're a great man and I'm glad I got the chance to meet you. It's been a long time since I've been this excited about anyone, but I know you're not going to come around and speak to me after Saturday, so I'll pull up my way. Thanks for making me smile like no one has made me smile like you have. Take care of yourself, okay? Bye, Kevin. Do you honestly not want to speak to me anymore? <laughs> I have a big heart and I care about people. That's why I get persistent at times and a bit my worst enemy, as you can see. <laughs> I care about you, Kevin. So if you want to see me, don't want to see me anymore, please tell me and I'll give you my word. I won't call or text you anymore. I don't feel comfortable seeing you anymore. <laughs> Because that 
sweet now, you give me the creeps now that you're pregnant. I can count all the ways how you speak in cliches now. So, do you want to bore a girl? Oh, it doesn't matter as long as it's healthy. Really? Those two things are related at all. It's not like one or the other. Oh, no, really, as long as it's healthy. I can't wait to hear someone say, don't care if it's brain dead, don't care if it's limbless, if it has a penis. Cause pregnant women are smug. Everyone knows it, nobody says it because they're pregnant. This and well you're enjoying makes you really annoying. So, is it a boy or a girl? Oh, we know, but we're not telling. <laughs> oh, we know, but we're not telling. Who's the father? Oh, we know, but we're not telling. <laughs> Bitch, I don't really care. I was being polite now, since you have no life now that you're pregnant. You say you're walking on air. You think that you're glowing, but you've been hoeing, and now you're pregnant. <laughs> you're giving birth now. You're not Mother Earth now. <laughs> oh my gosh, I've got so much going on. I got my first novel published. I moved house. I oh got married. I remember what I was doing before I was pregnant. Everything else just seems so meaningless. <laughs> gang violence in Mexico when Everything else just seems so trivial! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pregnant women are smart <laughs> Everyone knows it, nobody says it because they're pregnant Everything son of a gun You think you're so deep now, you give me the creeps now Now that you're The vehicle belongs to you, sir. Uh, yes, it does, yes. What's your name? Um, oh, hang on a minute. Ready? Yes. Uh, my name is Derek. What do you do? That's my name. What's it? This is Derek. <laughs> what kind of name is that? Well, it's my name. <laughs> Unusual, isn't it, Mr. Oh, well, if I had a pound for every time somebody said that. <laughs> Then, uh, how do you spell? <laughs> Mr. <laughs> oh, God, it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> I would be grateful if you would actually spell out for me, though, sir. You can't just... I would be grateful if you kind of spell out for me, sir. <laughs> it's, uh, N-I-P-P-L hyphen E. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon? What nipple? Where? Nipple. <laughs> what are you talking about? N-I-P-P-L-E Hyphen E Hyphen E <laughs> Spells nipple in my book. It does not spell. <laughs> I thought the modern day policeman was meant to be a highly trained law enforcement jurist and you can't even spell. Yes, alright. Mr. Nipple, what's your address? <laughs> what's your address? Oh, you're talking to me? Yes. I thought you were talking to Mr. Nibble, whoever he is. I think he's sat over there. No. <laughs> What's your address? Uh, yes, I believe it is 22. <laughs> <That's Kings Lane. laughs> watch it! What? I just watch it! Watch what, for heaven's sake? You're uh, striking a police officer a very serious offence. <laughs> yes, I imagine it is. Very serious, in fact. But giving your address to a policeman whenever they ask me. Not that very serious at all, is it? <laughs> or is it? Uh, perhaps the law's changed since I last looked. Perhaps the Home Secretary has taken stern measures to the rising tide of people giving their address to policemen whenever they ask for yes, it. Yes, alright. Ask a stupid person a question get a stupid answer. I beg your pardon. Right, so let's double check this with you, uh, Mr. So, uh, your address is 22... Kings Lynn? Hmm? No! About. It's 22! Kingsley! <laughs> well, I thought you said 22! Kingsley! <laughs> you dead! I'm oh, sorry, I can't read my own handwriting! Let me get a fucking computer then! So if I only could afford one. You know, at some angles, it kind of looks like 22. <laughs> that was too hard. 
Well, you know, so we really also get a copy. No, Rob, that was too fucking hard. Yeah, it's a very difficult, weird name to get a hang of. Isn't it? No, I had a fucking sketch, Rob, that was too fucking hard. <laughs> Good back to the poor, poor, poor little twat. No, oh, fuck off, you ginger prick. <laughs> a very special live episode of Antiques Roadshow. We're here seeing what hidden gems our guests have, what they're worth, and whether they would like to sell. I am Natasha. And I'm David Dickinson. <laughs> <laughs> David, what are you doing here? I'm co-hosting. But this is an argument. This is a well-respected high-ground television show about antiquities. And I'm shameless in the tiny work. I want to make as much as Gary Lineker or Chris Evans. <laughs> Fine, but no catchphrases. Let's bring on our first guest. Our first guest. <laughs> our first bloody guest. <laughs> A wizard is never late. <laughs> he arrives precisely when he means to. What's your name and where are you from? I'm David, I said no catchphrases. Ah, but that's not mine. It's Silla's. <laughs> not yours, nor anyone else's. Fine. Here we go. I'm Gandalf, from Middle Earth. And what have they brought for us today? Ah. Now this is lovely. It looks like a gold piece from the second age. Not quite in mint condition, but with a beautiful inscription on it. What can you tell us about the history of it? The one ring to rule them all. The one ring to find them. The one ring to bind them. And then the darkness find them. That's got a nice ring to it. <laughs> great darkness but also of great power. It was created by Sauron to rule the free people and I have spent a millennia attempting to stop him. The journey began. Uh, sorry to rush you but we are quite used for time. Well if you want the full history I have here for you. There's normally one for free box but four box but I've uh, well, I've misplaced it, but it's just the one book. Um, well, that might take a while. Well, to the fasten of the time, there are also uh, three films. <laughs> 1,300 uh, minutes in total. Well, I I'll just take your word for it. Are these for sale too? Are you mad? That's a first edition signed copy, and those are limited edition DVDs. <laughs> they are not for sale. Well, if you are looking <coughs> I predict you'd get around 30 to 50 pounds for it, just because of the cosmetic damage. Not to mention all the knockoffs you can buy on eBay and Etsy. <laughs> May I think about it? By all means. So, are you going to sell or are you going to pass on the offer? <laughs> Our next guest has a collection of vintage magazines to show us. What's your name? Dave. <laughs> and I believe you've travelled quite a way to be with us today. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> and I believe you have some printed works from the 20th century to show us. How did they come into your possession? They were my dad who gave them to me. Passed down generations. How wonderful. Uh, are these porn magazines? <laughs> yes, yeah, they're from the 90s. They're well old. <laughs> He's right, you know. The printed porn industry has all but disappeared ever since Hugh Hefner went from being stiff to being a stiff. <laughs> 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 A bit of damage. A few stains. <laughs> Look at those booby dazzlers. Not bad, <laughs> yes, but I'm just not sure 
Ten quid. <laughs> <laughs> it's up. It's disgusting and not what the licence payer should be paying to watch. Next up we have John Snow from West Doris. <laughs> this was my mother's. <laughs> what a lovely timepiece. What can you tell us about the history of it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and can you tell us about any of the previous owners? No. <laughs> How did it come into your possession? I honestly don't know. <laughs> you know nothing, John Snow. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, without knowing much about the history of the item, I can't offer you much, I'm afraid. Perhaps twelve pounds? I bought shame to the Brothers of the Night's Watch. We need the money to buy Dragonglass to defeat the White Walkers. <laughs> For the watch! <laughs> well, that's about all the time we've got for today. I think you'll agree it's been a real Bobby Dazzler. <laughs> Live edition, Dragon's Den. <laughs> Next up we have two girls from Derbyshire. We have a new method, selling popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 
vocabulary that Dr. Goldstein told us to use, <laughs> I am requesting that you hear my desire to communicate that you put your fucking back against <laughs> Yeah. You know what? Did we put everything into this company? Did you really? Like... No, but my mum did. <laughs> <laughs> and we really needed to work this time because our first company shut the bed. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to tell her. I'm, I'm going to tell her that he's going to see what fucking suck bitch. Please. Yeah. These cameras? They on? Yeah? Good. Let's go. Fuck you. Okay, so do you remember when our country was going through that like recession thing? And everybody was losing their houses and their jobs, and me and my sister decided to do what every girl without a marketable skill does open up a cupcake company. <laughs> it doesn't take a fucking rocket scientist to shit out like an okay cupcake. And people like cupcakes, okay? They're not gonna say no to a cupcake, they're not gonna be like, oh no, a cupcake. They love cupcakes, <laughs> okay? They're gonna eat the cupcakes. But you know, there's a scientific correlation between obesity and depression. Yeah, that's right. So we were just feeding these depressed people cupcakes, and we were just in the belly of the beast, feeding the belly of the beast and capitalizing <laughs> off of it. And people, they didn't need cupcakes. They didn't need buy cream fucking cupcakes. They needed a viable line of credit. They needed you to put your fucking back against mine! <laughs> This is a cut, cut that camera. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I should have been a mermaid. God, I'm done. <laughs>